part four. So, um, let's see. There's a. Are you are you glad? Are you happy on the road? I mean, you you don't have a job, right? No. Are you near poor? Technically, yeah, but I've always been poor, so it's really nothing new. And but what about your um, your education? You're not going to college. I was going to go to college for uh, political journalism, but then I gave up hope in the whole system. Maybe that's a temporary thing. Yeah, maybe, but I'm I'm more waiting because like my brother, he's an economist. He was. He didn't get to finish, but he went to college for like at least a year or two and studied economics and found out that the way this country's going, this the the economic collapse is coming. There's really nothing we can do about it at this point. Yeah, I hear that. You know, you can learn a lot. You can go to online classes, uh, college classes for free on your on the internet. Oh yeah, I think there was actually a uh, there was a college. I can't remember the name of it, but they released like. Like at least a hundred different courses for free uh, online. MIT, Harvard, Yale, a lot of places. Stanford, they all have classes. Yeah, yeah. I just the thing is, like, I don't think I need any because for this kind of lifestyle, I really don't need anything college can give me. All I really need to learn is how to play guitar better and how to survive. But you may want to merge into another lifestyle later. You know, whatever you learn, whatever you learn in life, you eventually end up using. I think. Yeah, I mean. I mean, there might be at some point in five years or maybe even a year when I'm like, you know, I can't do this anymore. But as far as I can tell, I'm not going to do that. Like, I enjoy this too much. You said something about you'd like to do this for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah, I could do it. I met a guy up at uh, the Colorado Gathering. He's 60. I don't know the number behind that, but he's 60-something years old. He went to the very first Nationals, and he's a hitchhiker. Old gray guy, big beard, and he still hitchhikes. hitchhikes. <laughs> if he and I believe, if he can do that, I can do that. Wow, sounds fun. It's but you know here here they everybody comes to the Sturgis rally too. Yeah, I've heard uh, when, when Sturgis comes around, it's like a, such an easy hitch to get to Sturgis and back out. Like oh yeah, so but easy. Maybe eventually you'll want to get a motorcycle. Eh, I thought about that, but I don't know if I could be one because like my thing is is. If if you ride a motorcycle, especially at Sturgis, you have to be one of those guys that's been that lives on his motorcycle. And I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could live that lifestyle. I do like traveling and all that. But like you're camping out, isn't the motorcycle just an extension of that? Yeah, yeah. But I don't. I I would like to. Hey, would, but motorcycles are dangerous. I know that. Yeah. Well, that's not what really worries me. It's just more. Like there's a reason I don't have a car, and that's because all the you know insurance and gas and repair it's costs. It's a hassle. Yeah. It's, it's so you're living kind of a hassle-free life. Yeah, in a way. I mean, the only the only need, only thing I need to do to keep myself going is food, you know, because I got my own two two feet. That's my transportation and my thumb. <laughs> yeah. If I lose my thumb, well, then I can just fly a sign and hopefully people realize I'm hitchhiking. <laughs> but I just use my thumb and my feet. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but you're traveling alone. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to travel with somebody? I did travel with some kids, and I had the worst times of my life with them. It was good because, you know, I got to go from Utah to Colorado in two weeks or less than that and then up to Red Feather. But it was just I, – I, I got – I wasn't there for it, but a meth had attacked our group of people because he kicked his girlfriend. They hopped in on it and were like, hey, stop. And he attacked them, ran by, rammed the van I was with. And then the next day, his girlfriend was left with her the dog, and the dog attacked the baby or this baby, and almost ripped his face off. It was a big pit bull, and that was the worst thing I think I've ever seen in my life. And that was when I was with other travelers. Oh wow! When I'm when I'm so alone, it's kind of like you. There's benefits of going with them, but there's you know liabilities too. Yes, yeah, there's some good and the bad, and sometimes the bad outweighs the good. Yeah, especially because like I feel like because. Uh, when I've been traveling, I stick by three principles. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. And I feel like I'm a pretty good person, so I feel like I've attracted good things. But when I was with these other people, one of the kids, he was not the, he was not a good person. He's like, like I said, he was, he'd stab you as soon as look at you. He'd rob you for no reason and all this just to get a fix. And I'm like, yeah, he's, he's not a good person. And he attracted a lot of negative things. And I believe that's, you know, because of his his actions, his actions attracted negative things, and I feel like that's why negative things happened when we were when I was with him. Mm. But I've been away from that group for about, about four weeks now. I think. Do you know where they are? 
I know Gator is in Denver right now. I don't know where Bug is at. Bug is, he's the kid that I'm talking about, and I don't know if he's still with Gator or not. Okay, we're five minutes, and we're turned off and on.